Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, good evening and welcome to the national final 12 to 17's grand final! He's aged 12 years old and he enjoys singing and drama and tonight he's going to come out and sing for you, me and Mrs Jones. Will you please now welcome onto the stage, act number two, it's Charlie Persaud! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Charlie Persaud! So yes, people, right now, we're on South End Seafront. This is where I grew up. My whole life, I've lived in South End. So we're gonna take a walk. We're gonna show you some history of where I grew up, what it was like to live in South End for me, and just show you around, you know? See some history of Charlie P, yeah? So boom. Windy, windy, the weather mud. All of my songs influenced through this. You see this place here? Adventure Island. Not good memories, bad memories. Sad, happy, everything. Boom! So yes, people, this is a place called Chinneries. One of the first places that I ever performed with the band. When I was nine or 10, 11 years old, somewhere around there. You know, the bouncers, they used to be funny about even letting me into the place where I was so young, you know? I used to be about this big, with a big hat on, performing my thing in here. So yeah, some history from Charlie Queen, one of the first places I performed, man. Crazy. Memories. Memories. Right now, we're at the Royal Hotel. This is a place where I did many shows in my life from when I was young. This was my training ground. This is where I trained up and learned to become a hard mic man, battling in the ring. <laughs> yeah, mad. When I see it, it still gives me goosebumps, mad feelings, you know? Upstairs is a big ballroom. This is where we used to do big shows and stuff with the band. And then later on in my career, when I linked up with Dubber Tears and got into the sound system culture down there, there's a place called the Dub Bunker. It's all changed now. I think it's some fancy restaurant now, but this place has got a lot of history of Charlie P and reggae music. All the things happened in here. Royal Hotel. Yes, people, so right now we're in Leon C. This was a place where we did, we did a good show a big show called Lee Folk Festival. I'm sure many of you have seen the videos online of me very small, singing in the back of a, a big van with the full band. This was the place where it happened. Once again, this was one of the first young, young times when I was extremely young, performing, doing what I love, right by the seaside in South End, yeah? Like me and G have got many Many, many memories years, here, yeah. many years. You know, we used to go busking. I'm gonna show you the place where we went busking, man. This is where we did it, you know. I sat here, Charlie was just singing there. It was full of people here and a stage over there. And this, this road here was completely blocked when Charlie started singing. <laughs> there was some, everyone was showing off in their big cars and Cadillacs and flashing cars all dressed up. And like, soon as he started singing, me and Mrs. Jones, we got a thing going on. There was a lady there that said, like, stop the car, there's a sweet little boy singing over there. And then people started beeping. Mad. And then, then people stopped beeping and got out and started listening. And he really just stopped the track of traffic. Crazy. It was just amazing. Yeah, man. We used to do it just for the love of doing it, you know? And we used to go and we used to make some money from it as well. So this was like the first experience I had from making money from performing. You understand what I mean? So 
it's cool, you know? Oh, it was very cool. And the coolest thing was we had the money in a sombrero. Yeah. Charlie went <laughs> round with the sombrero and we got about 85 quid. And, and we went up there in the pub to buy everyone a drink. And then Charlie came down to pick something up and some guy gave him 20 pounds extra. And when we were in the pub, Charlie came up to me and said like, hey G, this guy gave me this and he wanted to put it in my pocket and he said, I want you to keep it, don't give it to the rest of the guys, and but I want to give it to you, G. And that shows that way back then, Charlie had sold and he did the right thing, he's a cool guy. Still to this day, you know, we're brothers, always, uh, family, always. So, right now we're gonna go to my nan and granddad's, because they know the whole history of my thing, you know? So, yeah, we're gonna have some funny stories around there. So come, let's go to my nan and granddad's, man. I don't see no. So, so basically, when I was really small, I remember singing along. Cause the way I started singing. Because your mum was the first one who took you to the school. Exactly. Making, so it started off scenes. with my mum hearing me singing. Jingles. A little, along I with know. adverts on yeah. the TV. Do you yeah. remember? Well, she, Puppy Love was uh, the first. But you remembered all the words and yeah. she said, you know, it sounded word for word the same as it, listening on the radio. Yes. And, that was when <laughs> and that's when she took me to go and do some singing with Maggie with Roberts. With Maggie, yeah. And that's where I started singing like Puppy Love mm -hmm. and me and Mrs. Jones and things like I that. I remember your first um, gig was Maggie. Yeah. This was only in this little room. Uh -huh. And uh, you said, I ain't gonna sing. I'm not gonna sing. <laughs> <laughs> and you wasn't gonna go. Oh yeah. Remember I remember that, that. that was and, the and, first. And you said, I'm not very, going. The very I, first one, you didn't sing. And we're going, oh, why the badge of them? We had to come on to that. And the I next, forgot, I totally forgot no, about that. I remember it. But then the second one, you, uh, you were off the town. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was getting all agitated because you wouldn't go, no, I ain't going, oh, you were stopped. <laughs> <laughs> you were the right little monkey. We just had a sound system when we was kids, when we was older. And, uh, Charlie just took up. From there, really, just love reggae. Yeah. Was just born into it. It's my brother that ran the sound system. I was, I was just a box boy. <laughs> Dean. Yeah, we built the sound from uh, small parties, maybe 1979, 80. We used to play parties with one Goodman speaker. Um, and then after that, you start to take it a little bit more seriously and you want to compete. Because we used to listen to all the local sounds, Sir Justice, Higher Tone, Vital Ranking. That's Sir Gorgon, they're the sounds that we used to listen to locally from South from End. South End. Yeah, they're, they're the original sounds that we, we used to listen to. Um, and then a friend of mine would 
took me to London and we heard Tubby's for the first time and it was, uh, you know, and, and, and then it's like, I want to build a sound. And like everybody was, everybody back then was building a sound system, it seemed. They just fell in love with the music because we all listened to soul, really, first of all. And the first reggae dance, it was like, mm, I want a reggae. So, yeah, it must have played some part, yeah. So yeah. It was just always into music anyway, whether it be reggae or not, but reggae, yeah. reggae turned into his love. So. Side project, he loves his fish, <laughs> loves catching fish as well. Even from when he was very small, he, he was he knew what he was doing, he just he just knew music very well. He had singing lessons with someone called Maggie Smith, and uh, his first lesson, she's turned around and said that he would, uh, if he carries on, his timing is unbelievable. So, she, she was the first one really that brought him on from when he was like eight and then he's moved on from there and the rest is history. <laughs> First time on stage yeah. was probably he was about seven years old. He, was, uh, he just was singing like Motown stuff and things like that. And then we, he used to sing at the Circus Tavern. We used to have to get a coach of 50 people and we'd all go there. First time he sung now, he come off stuff. <laughs> and then he's come up to me, he's gone, yeah, Dad, look at this, look at this. And he's pulled out a wad of notes because he walked around the whole crowd and <laughs> everyone was giving him money, the fivers and tenors. And <laughs> so I've gone, yeah, I'll look after that, son. <laughs> what are they saying? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, yeah, it's all good, mate. All right, I'm, I don't want to Nothing do bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when he went to the circus tavern, you know, and he got up there, he didn't really look that nervous, did no. he? That, that he was like there. my second or third gig ever, I think. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. too, man. I'm at South End in Essex. Second time at the Circus Tavern a year ago, almost to the day, he set the Circus Tavern alight. Just nine years of age from South End in Essex. Please welcome on stage Mr. Charlie Barsold. Thank you. Before I start my first song, I'd like to thank family and friends of, for coming, and especially my mum and dad. And my first song for you is Uncle Melody. I hope you'll enjoy it. now and I hope you enjoy it and it's my girl. So let's have a little look through this thing. Oh I just put that one in there recently because I like the picture. <laughs> See so I was 11 there you know. Yeah yeah. So Budgie. 
That was yeah. your first girl for a minute. That um, when Budgie here, this was outside the BBC yeah. studio. That's when I was very close to signing a deal with the BBC. Yeah. That's like when I started getting into reggae. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's when we linked up. Oh, that's nice master. one of Malcolm, isn't it? That's when we was doing the thing for cancer research. Yeah, jeez, isn't that? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 So, yeah. What, what do you I... remember when Michael Prophet walked up oh, the stage? Yeah, oh, yeah, walked off. Tell, 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 tell me. <laughs> do you know? What do you uh, remember? It, it? He walked off. He got the ump. He got the ump because I don't know why. I don't know what happened, but he got the ump. He was in the middle of his gig and he walked off the stage and his girlfriend was standing near us mm. and she said, oh, you know, didn't the general go after him and it's you and then so everybody was doing nothing and you'd been on. Yeah. And then you got back up you on got the back stage. On the stage and, you and you got up and, and I sang his song, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, he see how good you was doing. And then he came and back. He came back and yeah. 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 off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy. Gold Masters ticket there for Summit or other. How much did that cost us? <laughs> <laughs> Two quid. Oh my god. Oh, Yo, as if you've got pictures of this! <laughs> Mad! This is when we went to Jamaica for the first time and well, I was on... On a boat? I was on a boat party called Cool Runnings, yeah? Yeah. And I started... I, t I asked them if I could take the mic and they obviously, all the yardies looked at me like, what you, you wanna take the mic? It's like, yeah, go on, go on, go on, do your thing. So I took the mic and I started singing the Dennis Brown song, Kadisha Cool, Cool Runnings, yeah. and, we tell, and the whole boat <laughs> went crazy, <laughs> slapping up, yo, slapping the walls of the boat. <laughs> yeah. As if I didn't know you had this. Yeah. Mad. You look like you're having a good time. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy feelings right now. We're going to the original Goldmaster All Star Studio where I recorded all of the old tracks, all of the original tracks you're gonna hear on this project. It's been it's been like nearly seven, eight, nine years since we've been in a room all together. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy man, I'm mad excited, so let's just go, let's go, let's go. Yo, just seeing this. Must have been like 10 plus years since we all linked up together in that same room, you know, and uh, it was wicked. The vibes were instantly there, you know, instantly busting jokes together and it never really goes. It's like riding a bike. Once you build that connection, it's there forever, man. So I'm internally grateful for what Goldmaster done for me when I was young. 
growing up in reggae music, you know, they they taught me the right way. They taught me the real roots and the culture and everything about reggae. So it was a, an amazing starting point for me in my career being with the Goldmasters, definitely. It yeah. feels a lot smaller for what does it is doing, man. <laughs> I know where you were a lot smaller. Yeah, yeah. On, but that's mad. Yeah, I'm not even lying, it does feel smaller though. I'm not even exaggerating, <laughs> it feels a lot smaller. This is where I used well, to be. Well, that's where Charlie used to be. Used to sit on the Up steps. on that, well, get up the steps, steps Charlie. This this is where I used to say, Jock could be here next to the cave. Well, if I get in position, it'll feel more natural. I was over here, right there. <laughs> yeah. Actually. So I just think most of the songs that I wrote. Yeah, sometimes there'd be yeah. spectators on the steps above. At times, yeah. Monday was rhythm section night, if you remember right. The heart, yeah. Monday. Which soon got yeah. took over by the yeah, horn section yeah. as well. And yeah. option yeah. to the horns yeah. to come along, yeah. which we yeah. did. And, <laughs> Thursday, and Thursday was full band night. We did just do Sundays here and there, depending on if we were working with. We did a lot of working with artists in those days as well. So when Charlie was around the band, it was kind of. Uh, during the period we were doing a lot of work with Jamaicans mm -hmm. and back in Jamaicans. That period there was lots of sound systems in South End. And, you know, mm -hmm. South End had a bit of a reputation at that yeah. time as being sort of one of the sort of dub capitals, you know, the UK style. But um, it's because so much music come out of South End. South End's been rich with vinyl collectors and, and musicians and reggae bands and people that are just into reggae. Charlie's sort of was brought up under to got an uncle that was a sound system owner. So he was always about around reggae and around sound system and there was lots of sounds in South End. I had a sound when I first started. I used to play his uncle. I had a sound called Revelation. I played Dean a few times. Mm. So and it was just that whole thing. And Charlie was just soaking all of that up from like baby style. I suppose, basically, I had a, a reputation uh, for someone who worked in Jamaica with uh, Sly and Robbie and Scratch and Roots Radix people and yeah, lots of people, really. And so uh, they'd heard of me down here and they wanted me to come down and be a vocalist because they were a ska band and they didn't have a vocalist. So, in a way, it was good for me because as soon as I got down here, there was like a ready-made team that could like do my tunes, we do gigs, we can record tunes, and that's more or less what happened. about trying to make the gold masters more sort of Jamaicanized and less I can't say white but anyway so the way I sort of approached them was um, to get better bass lines more syncopated bass lines and uh, more kind of African and if you like black horn lines so that developed over some time and I think that's relevant for Charlie because what I did with the gold master Charlie just followed on and we did it exactly the same way hello everybody hi I'm Charlie P we are the gold master all stars my first song for you is a very good song it's a new song it's called <laughs> And this is a song called Secrets of Father. Let's go.
first studio session we ever had together. Do you remember trying to think? I can't remember. It's when you come in younger than that. Freddie McGregor thing, wasn't it? That was the first tune. Yeah. That was the first tune. Take a tip from me, girl. Take your books and go to school. That was the first recording I ever did. I think so. I should mention Chris Ashley because on Charlie's early stuff, Chris, oh, Har- yeah. Chris Hansen was the trumpet player. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And he, you know, he was at his funeral the other week. You yeah, know, he died. And he was a good musician. And then, very early days, when Charlie first started working with us, we started doing the first few gigs, which. Mm. You know, it was like tricky because he was, you know, he was a kid really. Mm. I think he started gigging with us quite early. Yeah, yeah. he's blown about how we get in, he's thrown in the band. The first gig was a pub in Kemp for a load of skinheads. He's little as well, he was 10, 11, (laughs) and he was just like a baseball cap and a microphone. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what it looked like. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And we were laughing about this the other day. I said, do you remember your catchphrase? He's going, what's that? Clap your hands. (laughs) Do you remember? (laughs) Yeah. Was it, was I always that, used to say clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. I remember like parts of the actual show, but like where it was. Yeah, and sure. All I mean, like I don't that, remember where it was. <laughs> I remember the vibes. <laughs> I yeah. honestly do. I remember the vibes on the stage. Slowly over really weeks and months, tunes would get built up. And Charlie got used to building tunes. Charlie got used to working with a live band and record with a live band. And that actually went on for about two years or more. So Charlie was very lucky. And so were the band. She loves her crooked man, who lives her crooked mouth, who found her crooked six plus up on her crooked sour city, brought her crooked cat, who caught her crooked grass, and they all live together. If one in income tax, I said, I'll be. 